Hey, what's up everybody? Coach Kyle here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to learn more, please subscribe to the channel to get notifications of future videos. Today, I want to address a topic that was uh, commented on from another video. And the, the previous video was, why did I get hurt? Not me, but in general. And one of the questions was uh, related to stress fractures. And this individual was asking why stress fractures can occur um, foods to prevent stress, stress fractures. So I wanted to go over three studies that looked at this very question. The first was a look at girls age 9 to 15 and the incidence of stress fracture and their diets. So during a seven year follow up, almost 4% of the individuals developed a stress fracture. Dairy and calcium intake were not related to the development of a stress fracture. However, vitamin D was inversely related to stress fracture with risk. So vitamin D intake was down and stress fracture incident was up for those individuals. Now, the next study was done on young recruits into the Israeli army, I believe, and they suggested in this study that the development of stress fractures in recruits during combat basic training was associated with dietary deficiency before induction and during basic training of mainly vitamin D and calcium. So they did find a correlation between low calcium intake and increased risk of stress fracture in these male recruits. Now in the study looking at young females, they did not find a relation between dairy or calcium. And the third is a concept review of vitamin D and stress fractures. And they go further into suggesting that Patients receive 800 to 1,000 IU and perhaps as high as 2,000 international units of vitamin D3, not D2. D2 is a plant version. You want D3, the animal version. Uh, as outlined by the previously mentioned review article, and at least 100 milligrams daily of calcium. So they do suggest calcium, even though, like I said, once the previous study I mentioned didn't find a correlation, but it probably can't hurt. So calcium and vitamin D are going to be the most important considerations in preventing or healing from a stress fracture. I had an athlete who I began working with and he had a stress fracture. So I actually two athletes that I started working with had stress fractures and during our re our introduction to training uh, I had them making sure I made sure they were both taking vitamin D and calcium and so far they're both doing great uh, one just completed the Berlin Marathon and he's training for London next and one is a 5k runner who started with me from scratch because he took some time off due to the stress fracture so for foods that are high in vitamin D uh, fish is actually going to be the highest. Cod liver oil, swordfish, salmon, tuna. Next up is orange juice fortified with vitamin D, milk, yogurt, and then margarine, and then sardines, liver, beef, and then eggs. So there's the list of the top food ingredient, food items with vitamin D. Uh, the sun <laughs> is a great source of vitamin D. However, if you live, I think the example is if you live north of San Francisco, basically, uh, you're probably not getting enough sun exposure for adequate vitamin D uh, synthesis. So if that's you, uh, you might wanna consider focusing on fish or maybe supplementing with vitamin D. Supplement with vitamin D, uh, get a, an oil, uh, capsule with vitamin D or take vitamin D with food because fat helps increase the absorption of vitamin D. So these are some considerations for stress fractures and nutrition.